Welcome back to Paddy's Golf Tips. We're here at uh, the club at Carlton Woods uh, in the Woodlands, Texas. So I'm going to talk a little bit about speed today, uh, a subject really close to my heart. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Podrick Harrington. <laughs> So, a couple of ideas. Uh, first and foremost, speed is about breaking inhibitions. So we're, we're not talking a situation here where accuracy, trying to hit it straight, you know, trying to hit it under control, those sort of things are not gonna help your speed. We're looking for raw speed here so that when we go and play, we can taper it back a little bit and play within ourselves at maybe a slightly higher level. So. It's about breaking inhibitions. First thing you need, you really, really need this if you're gonna work on speed, is you need some sort of launch monitor. I've got a, a PRGR monitor here, $229, the best bang for your buck you're gonna get in golf. You need this feedback. Even this alone with the feedback, you'll start to see that certain swings, maybe a shorter swing suits you, maybe a longer swing suits you, maybe a faster backswing suits you, but you need the monitor to tell because as we've seen with all different people, some things for some, you know, some tips for some people, they don't work for everybody, okay? So definitely get a monitor. Okay, outside of that, now we're trying to break inhibitions. Yeah, I definitely always say, you know, you should be hitting maybe 10 balls every time you go to the range, maybe 20 balls every time you go to the range, absolutely at 100% speed, more than 100% that you can think of, you know, no inhibition about where they're going. You're not caring about accuracy. You're just caring about raw club head speed. We will taper it back, but you want to break that. So for inhibitions, right, where do you go? Because you will plateau, like even if you're hitting shots and you have the monitor, you know, that will take you so far. You've got to have, I suppose, training aids to do it. Uh, for me, I work with super speed. Uh, as a mature athlete, I'm probably doing it, you know, probably once every two weeks when I'm at home. If you're new to it, you can stick to the protocol and you're probably gonna be doing, uh, you know, a couple of times a week. Uh, you certainly gain, if you've never done speed work, you will gain very quickly. So I'll show you a few of the super speed uh, things. So the great thing about them is, generally a set will come with three different weights. So you'll have a heavy, medium and light. There's no club face on this and you're not using a golf ball. So you're going to swing, again, the PRGR is great. It measures without, you don't have to have an impact. So if I swing this, you know, I'm going to go as hard as I can. And like straight away, that's the light one. That's 138 club head speed, much faster than I can swing. Obviously there's no resistance there. That's one of the reasons it goes faster, but mentally, I'm breaking down those barriers. I'm gonna keep my personal best and that's a great way of competing when you're doing uh, speed work. If you have a friend that you can compete against or compete against yourself with a, you know, my PB with this, that was 138. First swing, my PB with this is 145. So I know if I can, every day I use this, I'm, oh, I hope I can get to 145, I hope I can break that. The competition is very important. And again, when you see me swing that, there wasn't a lot of thought gone into that in the sense of I, I'm not I'm not going here like my real routine would be I line it up waggle and go now I keep moving which is very important in the golf swing if you want to swing fast and make an athletic swing in anything you do in life you'd never stand there this is not going to help speed standing still so as you can see my normal one is two waggles and go but when i'm even doing speed work i'm even quicker i'm just like okay i want to go speed i put the club down i give some big waggles and i go lots of different variations in doing that you can do it with with backward steps so to get your back swing going you can do it with a forward step lots of ways the whole idea as you can see is i'm trying to create 
speed with some violence if anything but I'm trying not to have any inhibition about you know matching anything up where is it going I'm purely trying to swing this stick as fast as I can the great thing with this is and what I find with, with these particularly and what I like about it is some days I'm quick with the heavy some days I'm quick with the light I'm really trying to be quick with the medium one because that's going to replicate the driver more but you just don't know which one's going to come but I like the fact that there's variation. It's always about stimulating your central nervous system, fooling it in some ways, getting it to do something different. It's, in, you know, all sports are at the same thing. We're trying to trick our central nervous system to create a new ceiling. So if you swing at 100 mile an hour, we're trying to get our central nervous system to swing at 110. So when you relax, and think you're swinging normal, you'll actually be maybe at 105. So you've got to get to 110 if you want to play at 105. And that 105, I swear, will, think, will feel easier than your previous 100. So that's why you work on speed. It's not that you want to be out of control on the course. You want to get it so that you can break the ceiling and you create a new norm for you, which could be, you know, I say if, you, if everybody came four or five miles an hour, and, and to be honest, if you're new to speed work, you will gain that pretty quickly. Uh, later on, when you're older like me, there's a bit of a plateau if you've done speed work all your life, but that's why you need the variation of different weights. Speed stick have a new thing as well, which I have used in a club, which I really like. It's a counterweight. So they put a weight at the end of the shaft here, so that it helps the head release. Now I know in golf, there's a lot of talk about this. If your wrist is doing this through impact, you're not releasing the head. It's, it's completely inefficient and you're actually gonna cause a snap hook because you're gonna be like this and you're gonna flip. In the golf swing, we wanna release the club. It lines up like we, we see in the nice pictures with that little bit of a bow on the wrist and there'll be a bend in the shaft at, 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 with speed. But I am releasing the club. Now, the beauty with this one, because the weight is up top, and we've seen this with putters, it makes the head release past your hands, which is what you wanted to do. You have to have a release through impact. Again, that release, it's coming down, it gets to that point and it releases. It releases all the way through. Yes, at a static picture, it's like that, but it is releasing. So this is really nice. I, I particularly like this. Uh, my light one was 138. Let's see what we can do here. So I keep it just outside my grip there. Again, nice, nice and relaxed waggles and getting ready as you would if you were waiting on anything. If you're on the tennis court, you'd be ready. You know, you just don't want to be static. Straight away, that's six miles faster, 144 from 138. So again, very nice for me. I, I really, really, this one is, is really helpful for me to get the, the nice release past impact, okay? The more you release, I swear to you, if you try and release the club, there's very few people these days who cast. If you try and release the club properly with your hands, not hold on to it, you will find you will not hook the ball doing that. That's a Mr. Nomer. The people who don't release the club end up stuck and then they flip it and they're the people who hit the big blocks and the big hooks. So if you're somebody who hits a big block and a big hook, try releasing the club more and you'll find that will go away. Okay, again, as you've seen with the speed work, it's about breaking inhibitions. It's about keep moving. You know, things have got to move. Uh, a huge point in speed work, and what's starting to show up, grip strength has a huge part to it. So if you're a young athlete, uh, you know, coming to golf, you need to be picking up heavy things in the gym and holding on to them. So just picking up heavy weights and holding them, walking around, getting that grip, getting used to grabbing and holding heavy, heavy weights. If you're interested in a golfing sense, we, we, there's been some new innovations for that. I've got one here with me. Uh, it's a kind of squidgy grip. So it's a big tick grip. Again, when you have the big tick grip, more of your hands and arms are engaged. And simply, this is, you can hit shots with it, which is perfectly fine. I like to turn it down when I hit shots. Uh, so no problem hitting shots with it. Okay. The interesting thing, when you hit shots with it, it feels awesome afterwards when you've got a slightly skinnier grip because you feel like you have more control. But the big tick grip. Now, automatically I pick this up 
and you can see I keep squeezing it. And that's quite important in golf, being able to put tension on and take tension off. Very important in golf, being able to squeeze, let go. So you can do, there's lots of drills, there's protocols on, on Super Suites, uh, on their, their site, their app, to be able to show you the different drills for this. But in general, it's, it's quite a nice feeling when I pick it up, I squeeze it. I keep getting used to that, that motion of tight, let go, tight, let go. The force and the stronger your grip is, because we know at impact, you are pulling, pulling back up. Everything is releasing up with your body and you're pulling on the, the grip to get the club head to go by. The stronger your grip strength is, the better you're going to be at that pulling motion, the better you're going to be in the rough, the better you're going to be able to stable the club face. You will hit the ball straighter because of these speed drills. We're not talking here making you hit it more crooked on the golf course. If you do this right, speed should actually make it easier for you to swing within yourself and hit the ball further. You know, outside of that, swing away. You know, lose some inhibitions. Uh, don't worry about hitting a bad shot. And, and ultimately, if you're a, a, a younger player and you're, you're in that phase of, of still trying to be a better player, don't worry about where you hit it. Worry about being able to play from where you hit it. So I see this a lot where, you know, a, a longer driver will hit it. You know, he try and drive a par four and he hit it 30 yards right of the green and it might be in a bit of scrub. And, you know, everybody's screaming at Mo, you should have hit an iron on the fairway. Yeah, that would be simple. But if he knows how to play from 30 yards out of the scrub, he's actually going to end up being a better golfer. So learn to play from where you hit the golf ball. Don't worry about necessarily being that constrained and that perfect, especially if you're in the development years. Uh, speed is going to help you. That's all from Paddy's Golf Tips.